Hello. In this video, which is the last in my series on epoxides, I'm going to talk about the use of epoxides in synthesis. And I'm going to frame it around figuring out how to synthesize this molecule here from simpler pieces. Uh, and I just want to highlight that without sort of any guidance, you wouldn't necessarily know that uh, you would want to go about using an epoxide. But I'm going to show you how to figure that out. So I'm numbering some carbon atoms in this molecule. Uh, whoops. I'm numbering some carbon atoms in this molecule. And what you can see is uh, at carbon atom 2, I have a double bond to oxygen. And then at carbon atom 3, I've got an alkyne. And I know that I can use alkynes as nucleophiles to form, terminal alkynes as nucleophiles to form new carbon-carbon bonds. And so I have this, you know, and I actually want to delete some of my other numbers now. What I would call a one-two relationship. You know, where I have an oxygen-containing functional group on one carbon and a something that looks like it came from a nucleophile on the neighboring carbon. I might have other hydrocarbon groups or, or you know, an oxygen, some sort of oxygen containing functional group, an alcohol or something I can make from an alcohol. Okay. So this one, two relationship looks like something that I could make from Oops, uh, phosphorine. An epoxide and an appropriate nucleophile. Because nucleophiles attack at one carbon and the oxygen ends up on the other. So anytime you see this sort of nucleophile oxygen functional group and it may not be an alcohol, it might be like here, I've got a ketone, so I, I know I can make ketones from alcohols, it might be ether, you know, whatever. But this one-two relationship, actually, I'm going to get my, my, my one and my two in here into my box as well. Get these in here to my box as well, the one-two relationship. Uh, and I'm going to draw myself over to this structure on the right, right my retrosynthesis arrow. This kind of arrangement looks like something I can make from an epoxide. So now all I need to do in my structure over here is identify, well, I know that I'm going to want to form this carbon-carbon bond here. <clears throat> And so I can guess that I'm going to be making a nucleophile. Here's my nucleophile out of this epoxide. And then the other piece is going to be, or not this epoxide, alkyne is my nucleophile. And the other piece is going to be an epoxide. And it's going to look like this. And at the moment, yes, there's a chirality center here, but it's going to turn out we don't care. Uh, if you, you don't believe me, just 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 hang on for the ride. Right. So here is our epoxide. Let's let's start start our way forward then, and let's start from from the alkyne. First, we need to deprotonate the alkyne using something like sodium amide or maybe sodium hydride. And then we're going to add uh, the epoxide that we want to use. And we're going to follow that up with an aqueous workup step because there, there's no proton source around yet. I've got one, two, and three in here. And in fact, uh, this could probably all be done in one reaction vessel. Probably should be done in one reaction vessel. Okay. okay. 
And, and there is a chirality center here. And depending if we just started with one enantiomer of the, the epoxide, we'd have gotten one enantiomer here. We start with the racemic mixture. Since I haven't specified stereochemistry, that means the racemic mixture. Um, I end up with the racemic mixture here. And it turns out that it's not going to matter because what we're going to do then is oxidize this alcohol to the corresponding ketone. Uh, and just about any oxidizing reagent would, would work. I'm going to choose PCC because it doesn't take a lot to, to type out. and I'm lazy. Uh, but there you go. You could use chromic acid or potassium permanganate. You want to make sure you avoid things that might react with the alkyne. Uh, but generally, a lot of things are going to work here. And this is just one example of how to use epoxide in synthesis. Turns out it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just need to look for these one, two relationships. Uh, and organic chemists who, who do this for a living uh, learn to look for these kinds of patterns in the, the compounds they might want to synthesize can help them uh, break down a synthesis problem into simpler steps. And if you've watched my video on solving synthesis problems, you know I'm all about breaking down synthesis problems into simpler steps. Right. This concludes my, my video and my series on epoxides. Thank you for watching.